This video is part of a series of videos created to familiarize you with operation of the GFC 600 Digital Autopilot. We'll focus on enunciations displayed on the GMC 605C mode controller, while showing comparative enunciations on the original GMC 605. In this video, you'll learn how to set the system up to execute instrument approaches. We'll use the GTN 650XI as our navigator for loading the approaches. Executing a coupled approach involves a three-step process, with discrete triggers for each step. First, you have to load the approach. You can do this as soon as you know which approach to expect, either based on the wind direction at your destination or ATC guidance. So, step one is to load the approach when you know which approach you want or expect. Your Garmin Aviation Training Team has a tip for you when loading approaches into a GTN navigator. Always load the approach via a logical transition, because when you do this, Garmin provides for selecting either Activate Approach, which will take you directly to the transition waypoint, or Activate Vectors to Final. If you load the approach via Vectors, the only option that appears on the Activation menu is Activate Vectors to Final. Take note that if you're using a GTNXI navigator and are loading an approach based on a ground-based nav aid, when you load the approach, the frequency for the nav aid will be loaded into the standby field. You will need to select to move the frequency to the active field by touching that field. Step two is to activate the approach. The trigger for this is when ATC instructs you to proceed to the transition waypoint or begins providing vectors to final. Since you loaded the approach via a transition waypoint, selecting Activate Approach will provide you with direct guidance to that waypoint. If ATC starts providing vectors, you can select Activate Vectors to Final. So, step two is to activate the approach when ATC sends you to the transition waypoint or begins vectoring you. You can verify that the approach is active by observing the active waypoint below the approach header in the flight plan. Step three is to arm the approach. The trigger for this is when ATC clears you for the approach. Arming the approach provides for capturing the lateral guidance as well as any vertical guidance associated with the approach. A tip here is that if you're only clear to intercept the inbound course, you should select the nav button rather than the APR button because a clearance to intercept the course is not a clearance to descend on the approach. For our first example, we'll show an ILS approach. Since we're expecting to conduct an ILS, we've loaded that into the navigator via a logical transition waypoint. When ATC clears us to our transition waypoint, we can select to activate the approach. Note that selecting the transition waypoint and selecting direct to has the effect of activating the approach since the waypoint is within the approach. Since the active lateral mode of the autopilot was GPS, the aircraft will turn to align with a direct course to the transition waypoint. Mode controller enunciations will remain as they were at this point. As we progress on the arc, ATC clears us to intercept the inbound course. Again, since GPS is the active mode, we know that the autopilot will track the inbound course, so no change is required at this point. Once we're established on the inbound course, ATC clears us for the approach and that is our trigger for arming the approach. This is done by pressing the APR button. After pressing the APR button, you always want to verify that the appropriate armed indications appear. For an ILS approach, you'll see a white LOC appear in the lateral field and a white GS appear in the vertical field. Once inbound to the final approach fix, the navigation source automatically changes from GPS to LOC so you will see LOC appear in green in the lateral field. As we approach the final approach fix, the vertical deviation indicator nears the center, and the glide slope is then captured, as shown by the GS enunciation showing in green. With both the localizer and glide slope captured, the autopilot can be used to fly you to the decision altitude, at which point you will need to disconnect the autopilot and hand fly to the runway. Note that the autopilot will not level off at the decision altitude. RNAV approaches with vertical guidance are flown much the same way as an ILS, and the same three-step process applies. With an approach loaded via a transition waypoint, we have the option to activate the approach via the waypoint or via vectors.
In this example, ATC begins supplying vectors to final. So we adjust the heading bug to the heading given by ATC, and then select HDG mode. Since we're on vectors, we then select to activate the approach via vectors to final, which draws a magenta course line out from the final approach fix. If ATC only clears us to intercept the inbound course, we should select the nav button to arm capture of the course. Doing so provides a white GPS enunciation in the lateral field. If they clear us for the approach, the APR button should be pressed, which would arm the GPS course capture and vertical guidance capture, and, in this case, a glide path enunciation of GP would show in white. Once we capture the inbound course, the white GPS indication moves up and changes to green, showing that it's active. As we near the final approach fix and the vertical deviation indicator nears the center, the white GP enunciation moves up and changes to green, showing that the glide path is captured. Just as with the ILS approach, the autopilot can be used to fly you to the decision altitude, at which point you'll need to disconnect the autopilot and hand fly the remaining distance to the runway. Approaches without vertical guidance, such as localizer only, localizer back course, VOR, or LNAV only approaches, can also be flown coupled to the autopilot. With these approaches, you need to make sure the CDI has been selected to show navigation information from the appropriate source, and you would then select the appropriate button to arm capture of the lateral path. For a localizer back course approach, you would select the BC button, and for all other approaches, you would select the APR button. Once at the final approach fix, on any approach without vertical guidance, you should select vertical speed mode and then rotate the down up wheel to select an appropriate descent rate. With certain Garmin displays, it's possible to adjust the selected altitude to capture at MDA, as shown here with ALTS 1460 showing as armed. If you arrive at the MDA and have the runway in sight, Press the AP Disconnect button and hand fly to the runway. If the runway is not in sight at MDA, and with the altitude captured, you should proceed to the missed approach point. To see how the missed approach is conducted, see our video in this series covering the missed approach. Here's another tip from your Garmin Aviation training team. With a Garmin navigator, such as the GTN 650XI, a large number of approaches that show as having lateral guidance only on approach charts will have GPS lateral and advisory vertical guidance available. For VOR, TACAND, and NDB approaches, you can use GPS-based guidance and remain on magenta needles, as long as you monitor the operational primary navigation aid when inbound from the final approach fix. Monitoring the primary nav aid can be done using a separate receiver and instrument if needed. Okay, now you've seen how to set your system up to execute instrument approach procedures. Be sure to view the other videos in this GFC 600 Digital Autopilot series, where we discuss controls and enunciations, and operational features of this autopilot system. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about your Garmin equipment, and thanks for flying Garmin.